All right, as we are learning, not as smooth as uh, last Sunday, but it's all right. It's a learning process. We had an issue with the parking. Uh, so I went out there and took care of it real quick. But I thank you guys for coming. As you guys know, um, Jose's wife recently just um, had surgery. So we miss her today. We're praying for her today. Um, Remember her in your prayers um, the rest of this week. Um, and then John brought his mother. We thank you for coming. Uh, we're trying we're trying to figure it out. We're going to get this thing going smooth. And then obviously we have Morgan, my mother, my sister, Jose, and my wife. We're going to figure that thing out with the, uh, the kids in the back eventually. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but the word that the Lord gave me, uh, it's in 2 Chronicles chapter 18. And... The topic that I have is I won't strip down. So you can, I'm reading from the King James Version. You can feel free to follow along with whatever version you have. Now, Jehoshaphat had riches and honor and abundance and joined affinity with Ahab. And after certain years, he went down to Ahab and Samaria. And Ahab killed sheep and oxen for him in abundance and for the people that he had with him and persuaded him to go up with him to Ramoth Gilead. And Ahab, king of Israel, said unto Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, Wilt thou go with me to Ramoth Gilead? And he answered him, I am as thou art, and my people as thy people, and we will be with thee in the war. And Jehoshaphat said unto the king of Israel, Inquire, I pray thee, at the word of the Lord today. So we have the king of Israel, Ahab, and then we had Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, and they came and they had a conversation and Ahab was asking the king of Judah to go down to Ramoth Gilead to go to war with him. And Jehoshaphat said, that's cool. That's fine. It sounds like a good idea. But let's inquire first at the word of the Lord today. So the king of Judah, he was down to go. But he said, before we make this move, let's pray about it. Before we come into this pact together, let's pray about it. Before we make another decision, let's see what the Lord has to say about it before we just go based off what we're feeling in the moment. Therefore, the king of Israel gathered together of prophets 400 men and said unto them, Shall we go to Ramoth Gilead the battle, or shall I forbear? And they said, Go up, for God will deliver it into the king's hand. So they called 400 prophets that were supposed to be speaking on behalf of God. And so there was a large group of prophets and they said, King, this is the direction that we need to go. They said, go ahead and go to Ramoth Gilead. You're going to have the victory. But Jehoshaphat said, is there not here a prophet of the Lord? So notice that these guys had the title prophet, but Jehoshaphat said, I want to talk to a prophet of the Lord. I want to talk to a man of God. And he said that we may inquire of him. Somebody had to have the sense to say, hold up, something seems off about this. It doesn't sit right in my spirit. Now, I know the majority is saying, yeah, king, let's go to war. Yeah, let's go in the direction. But something about the direction that we're going in is not feeling right in my spirit. So I want to stop and make sure that I am in position to hear from God. I don't want to step unless I know that God is approving. I don't want to move unless God is behind it. So before Ahab, we go down and try to take Ramah the Gilead, let's find a real man of God. The Bible says there's safety in a multitude of counseling and not to lean on to our own understanding. Sometimes Sometimes we can move too fast and we can jump the gun and the Lord is saying just hold off before you make that move before you respond before you react and how your flesh is feeling just wait on me to give you an answer and the king said unto Jehoshaphat there is yet one man by whom we may inquire of the Lord but I hate him for he never prophesied good unto me but always evil the same as Micah the son of Elma and Jehoshaphat said, let not the king say so. So Jehoshaphat says, I don't want to go to the prophet that isn't, isn't going to uh, prophesy what God says. And there's many people in, in today's day and age, they want to hear what they want to hear. They want to uh, go by their feelings, whatever they feel, that's what they want to do. And so Jehoshaphat says, hold up. All right, I want to hear from a real man of God. And Ahab, on the other hand, says, I don't like this prophet because every time he speaks, it goes against what I feel. Every time he speaks, 
He's saying something evil. We've got to be careful that we're not in a place where I don't want to go around people who are going to say something that goes against my feelings. I don't want to go around this man of God. I don't want to go around this woman of God because I know that the counsel they give me is going to step on my toes a little bit. I know that the counsel that they might give me might go against my feelings a little bit. What should matter to me is what is the Lord saying in this season in my life? What is the Lord saying in this moment in my life. Now, when I go and I inquire of the Lord and answer, even if it goes against my feelings, that's what I want to stand on, not the false prophets who are telling me the things that I want to hear. And if you look at what's going on in the world today, there are prophets and preachers everywhere, and it's easy to find a man of God or a woman of God that is speaking according to how you feel, that is speaking according to our emotions. But now more than ever, we want to make sure that we are hearing from God for ourselves and that we surround ourselves with people who know how to hear from God. Anybody agree with that? Yes. All right. And so watch this. And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, There is yet one man by whom ye may inquire of the Lord, but I hate him, for he never prophesied good unto me, but always evil. And the king of Israel called for one of his officers and said, Fetch quickly Micah, the son of Imla. And the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, sat either of them on the throne, clothed in their robes. Now I want you to notice that. They were sitting on the throne, and they were clothed in their robes. And they sat in a void place at the entering of the gate of Samaria, and all the prophets prophesied before them. And Zedekiah, the son of Chennai, had made him horns of iron and said, Thus saith the Lord, with these that shall push Syria until they be consumed. And all the prophets prophesied, so saying, Go up to Ramoth Gilead and prosper, for the Lord shall deliver it into the hand of the king. So the false prophets here are telling the king what he wants to hear. The false prophets are giving a word that is going to kill the king in the end. And this is the danger of when you're listening to voices that are not the voice of God in your life. You have to ask yourself, is my hearing conditional? Am I opening to really hearing from God if it goes against how I feel, if it goes against how I like? Because if I'm not really open to the truth, all right, if I'm really not open to God directing my steps and ordering my steps, I might miss it because the only thing that I'm willing to receive is the thing that lines up with what I want and my feelings. So God might be trying to speak one thing, but in your mind, you already have your mind made up what you want to do. And so the word of God comes forth and it just bounces off because it's not lining up with your feelings. It's not lining up with your emotions. So the enemy will have you fighting a battle that was created to distract you or destroy you. The false prophet said, yes, go ahead. Fight that battle and you're going to be victorious. But this was not the word of the Lord. And this is why you've got to be careful in what you do and where you go. The Bible says in all your ways, acknowledge God and he will direct your path. Because if I don't acknowledge God, I will get this feeling because false prophets also can be the voices that come against your mind through your feelings, through your emotions, through bad influences, through bad company and bad friends. And so they'll advise you to do some things that that will get you into situations that are meant to destroy you, but they'll mask it as a good idea. And they'll say, yeah, King, it is a great idea for you to go down to Ramoth Gilead. It is a great idea for you to date this individual. It is a great idea for you to marry this person. It is a great idea for you to leave that church. And if it's not what God has for you, John, you can find yourself in situations, in certain battles where the enemy was sending you to be destroyed. The false word told you it was a good opportunity, but it destroyed you. The false word told you it was a good idea, but it set you back. The false word told you it was a good relationship, but it got you off course. What voices are you listening to? Verse 12. And the messenger that went to call Micah spake to him saying, behold, the words of the prophets declare good to the king with one assent, let thy word, therefore I pray thee, be like one of theirs and speak thou good. So we have the messenger and he comes to the prophet and he says, look, everybody else is saying this. You need to go ahead and line up with what they're saying. And then that's where you have that peer pressure. Okay. He says, everybody else is prophesying these good things about the king. So let thy word, therefore I pray thee, be like one of theirs. And Micah said, as the Lord liveth, 
Even what my God says, that will I speak. Look at somebody in the room and say, that will I speak. And when he was come to the king, the king said unto him, Micah, shall we go to Ramoth Gilead to battle, or shall I forbear? And he said, go ye up and prosper, and they shall be delivered into your hand. Now notice Micah says the same thing that the false prophet said. But if you look at how the king responds, the king said unto him, How many times shall I adjure thee that thou say nothing but the truth to me? So reading that verse, it lets me know that Micah probably said this in a very sarcastic way to the king because he already knew the king's mind was made up. So he says, oh yeah, go ahead. You know, you're going to prosper and it's going to be delivered into your hand. And something about the way that Micah said it upset the king. And he said, because he said the same very thing that the false prophet said. And so the king says, how many times shall I adjure thee that thou say nothing but the truth to me in the name of the Lord? Then he said, I did see all Israel scattered upon the mountains as sheep that have no shepherd. And the Lord said, they have no master. Let them return, therefore, every man to his house in peace. Don't go to war. And the king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, did I not tell thee that he would not prophesy good unto me, but evil? When God gave you the word and it went against your feelings, how did you feel about that? Sometimes God may say some things, God may speak some things, and it's not what you wanted to hear. And he said, therefore, hear the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting upon his throne and all the hosts of heaven standing on the right hand and on his left. And the Lord said, who shall entice Ahab, king of Israel, that he may go up and fall at Ramoth Gilead? And one spake, saying after this manner, and another saying after that manner. Then there came out a spirit. Look at this. Then there came out a spirit and stood before the Lord and said, I will entice him. And the Lord said unto him, wherewith? And he said, I will go out and be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. And the Lord said, thou shalt entice him and thou shalt also prevail. Go out and do even so. Now, therefore, behold, the Lord hath put a lying spirit in the mouth of these thy prophets. And the Lord has spoken evil against thee. Now, this is the Lord talking to the spirit. And we know that the Bible says, if you don't love the truth, God will send a strong delusion. So if I don't love the truth, if I don't want the truth, if I don't want to hear the truth, it gives the enemy legal access to mess with me because the spirit presented itself to God and said, I'll be a lying spirit in the mouth of the prophets. And the Lord told him to go forward. Now, we're just building a foundation here. Then Zedekiah, the son of Shani, came there and smote Micah upon the cheek. He smacked him on the mouth and said, Which way went the Spirit of the Lord from me to speak unto thee? They mocked the word of God. They smacked Micah for speaking what God said. Have you ever been mocked? Have you ever been attacked for standing up for truth? are speaking truth? Have you ever taken a beating or had some kind of resistance for standing on God's word? They came to Mike and they said, this is what everybody else is doing. This is how everybody else is moving. This is what everybody else is saying is a good idea. But Micah purposed in his heart and said, I don't care what everybody else says or what everybody else does. I'm going to stand on what God is telling me. I don't care what the news says. I don't care what the media says. I don't care what my family Family says, I've got to stand on the word that God has given me. And sometimes for you to stand on that word, Brother John, Sister Morgan, it's going to cost you something. When you stand on the word of God, people are going to mock you. They're going to ridicule you. You're going to say, I had this dream or God spoke this to me or God was tugging on my heart and they're not going to be able to receive it. And the enemy's going to try to steal it and he's going to try to make you doubt. And he's going to say, look at these 400 prophets. There's saying something different than what you're saying. What? So you must be crazy. You must, that wasn't God that was speaking to you and you've got the purpose in your mind. I know that I know what God said to me and even if everybody else goes the other way, even if everybody else won't stand, 
mind going to stand on the word of God? Why is this important for our individual lives? Every single one of you, Brother Jose, my mother, God has spoken things in your life and the situation around you might look like it's going in the opposite. But Jose, you've got to stand on what God told you for you and your family more than you've got to stand on what God told you. You've got to move in the way that God is telling you to move. But there'll be things that try to get you to bow down. He said, Micah, please just do like the other prophets. Let's just do like the other churches. Let's just do what the world is doing. Let's just try to fit in with them and play it. Don't anger the king. I wonder if there's anybody in this room who doesn't have a problem angering the kings of this world, John. I wonder if somebody in this room, we've got all kinds of principalities and kings, but I'm not intimidated by what the kings of this world are saying. I'm going to say what thus saith the Lord. I'm not worried if the kings don't like it. I'm not worried if the kings get angry. I'm standing on what God told me me. Now watch this. And Micah said, behold, thou shalt see on that day when thou shalt go into thy inner chamber to hide thyself. This is after they smacked them. That the king of Israel said, take him, Micah, and carry him back to Ammon, the governor of the city, and to Josh, the king's son. And say, thus saith the king, put this fellow in prison and feed him with the bread of affliction and with the water of affliction until I return in peace. And Micah said, if thou certainly return in peace, then hath not the Lord spoken by me. And he said, hearken all ye people. So the king says, look, we're going to feed him with the bread of affliction and the water of affliction. And we're going to lock him in prison. So sometimes you're going to be in a situation like that where God spoke something to you. And for a little season, it might look like the enemy's winning. For a little season, Micah was locked in the prison. For a little season, it looked like Micah might have to eat his word. For a little season, Micah had to sit there and watch them go out, even though he knew that God had said something different. For a little season, Micah I had to watch and wait from the prison and eat that bread and, and probably had to fight the bitter taste in his mouth, but he stood on the word of God. I know it looks like one thing now. I know that y'all didn't want to listen to the man of God. I know that you didn't want to listen to the I might even see the enemy celebrating right now, but the same way when Jesus went down all oh, into the grave and it looked like it was all over and some began to forsake Jesus, we know that in three days he rose again. Every single one of us might have a situation like that in our life right now where you feel discouraged and you feel down. You say, Lord, I'm looking for my next move. I'm looking for my next step. I'm looking for my next relationship. I'm looking for my next job. I'm looking for my next testimony and I don't see how it's going to come to pass. It doesn't look like it's working. It doesn't look like nobody's listening. It doesn't look like anybody's getting with the program. But Lord, I'm holding on to your word. I'm not going to do what the 400 prophets did. Even if I've got to be by myself and I get persecuted for it. I'm standing on your word. Now all of that was just to build the foundation of what God wanted me to share with you guys. So watch this. Micah would not turn down who he was to please the king. You hear me, John? He would not turn down who he was. He would not change his DNA. He would not change who he was to please the king. But watch this. Maybe you're not the one receiving, but you hear a false prophet speaking and you won't speak up. Maybe you hear everyone else saying one thing, but you know that God has told you something different, but you're not doing anything about it. Maybe sometimes we are not the Micah. And maybe sometimes we are not the Ahab, but maybe we're sometimes the one that is watching and we're seeing all of this happen. We're seeing the enemy move. We're seeing the enemy try to sow strife. We see the enemy trying to sow division and we see this happening, but we do nothing about it. We see the enemy trying to attack our family members. We see the enemy because it's a false prophet. It's a false word. We see the enemy speaking lies over John's mind. We see the enemy attacking more 
Morgan coming against her in the spirit. And God is saying, I wonder if somebody is willing to step up and come against the false prophets, even if it won't be popular, even if I know if I get involved in that, I'm going to get some backlash. But I'm about to go to war for my brother Jose. I seen how the enemy was coming against you, Jose. I seen how the enemy was trying to take you out. I saw how the enemy was speaking like, brother, let's come together. Let's have a prayer meeting. God is looking for somebody that will not sell out, but also who won't stand by the side and let the enemy just run rampant and do whatever he wants to do. We've got to make up our mind and say, you know what? I'm not going to let the enemy run rampant in my house. I'm not going to let the enemy run rampant in my mind with false lies and false words. I'm not going to let the enemy run rampant in my heart. I'm going to be steadfast with the word of God. Now watch this. Can you stand tall on what God said when you see everyone else is bowing down? So the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, went up to Ramoth Gilead. And the king of Israel, watch this. This is the main part of everything that I wanted to say. Said unto Jehoshaphat, I will disguise myself and I will go to battle, but put thou on thy robes. He said, I will disguise myself and I will go to the battle. But you, you put on thy robes. So the king of Israel, Ahab, disguised himself and went to battle. Now the king of Syria had commanded the captains of the chariots that were with him, saying, Fight ye not with the small or great, save only with the king of Israel. Even the enemy knows this. He says, Don't waste your time with the small battles. Take out the king. Take out the head. Take out the prayer warrior. Take out the ones that are calling for unity. Take out the ones that are calling for prayer meeting. Take out the different. Don't, don't worry about the ones that are lukewarm and they've got one foot in the world and one foot in the church. Don't worry about the ones that don't have a prayer life. But what I need you to do is come against the ones who got a real prayer life. What I need you to do is come against the ones that look like the kings, the kings, the sons and daughters of God, the ones that are dressed in their robes. Notice Ahab said, hey, you go ahead and wear your king gear and I'm going to just put on some regular soldier clothes. I'm going to go undercover. God is not looking for us to go undercover. God is not looking for us to tone down the message and, and creep behind enemy lines and kind of sneak and infiltrate. He's not looking for secret agents. He's not looking for anybody to try to look like the world and move like the world. Oh, I'm moving and looking like the world in order to win them. That's not what God needs. He wants somebody to put on the king's robe and walk in the power and authority of who you are. I'm not taking off my robes. I want you to know exactly who I am when I walk into this battle. Now notice both kings, John, they wore the robes when we read earlier, when they were sitting in the void, when they were sitting in the gate, when they were sitting in the empty place. It's easy to wear my robes when it's just me and the false prophets. It's easy for me to say I'm a Christian when it's just me and other Christians. It's easy for me to be bold when I'm in the house of God and I'm around my brothers and sisters in Christ. It's easy. Oh, look at my robes. Oh, oh, look at the Bible verses that I know and look at the way that I sing. But God is saying, I'm looking for somebody who will take that same energy to the battlefield. Wear the robes in the void and wear the robes on the battlefield. Ahab said he wanted to fit in. He didn't want to stand out. Wearing the king's robe will put a target on your back. There's a price to pay. Do you want people to know who you are in the battle only when it's good or only when it's bad? Is it conditional when you put on the king's robe? Taking off your king's clothes to fit in the world will get you killed. Look at somebody and say, don't take it off. And it came to pass when the captains of the chariot saw Jehoshaphat, this is the one who kept the king's robe on, that they said, it is the king of Israel. Therefore, they compassed about him to fight. 
Because he had the king's robe on, Romy, they surrounded him. They saw that's the king. That's the one that's praying. That's the one that's fasting. That's the one that is dressing himself in the king's garments every day. That's the one that we got to take out. Because if I can take you out and stop you from praying, if I can take you out and stop you from being faithful, then I can affect all the foot soldiers, the one that Ahab was dressing. Ahab wanted to be the king when it was convenient. Ahab wanted to be the priest when it was convenient. Ahab wanted to be the, the prayer warrior when it was convenient, but not on the battlefield. And, and Jehoshaphat said, I'm not stripping down who I am. I'm going on to the battlefield in the king's robes. And because of that, the enemy identified and saw Jehoshaphat and they surrounded him. But what did Jehoshaphat do? He didn't get scared. He didn't, he didn't start, oh, I'm not a king. I just borrowed this from somebody else. It says he cried out and the Lord helped him and God moved them to depart from him. Sometimes we try to get out of certain situations and certain fights and certain battles in our own way. Oh, let me take this off and let me take that off and let me do this and let me lean to my own understanding. And Jehoshaphat said, no, I'm not going to do that. And when the enemy surrounded him, he didn't get scared. He didn't get afraid. He just cried out to God and the Lord helped him and God moved them to depart from him if you keep your robe on God is going to take care of you your robe yes it will have you highlighted to be attacked but God is going to take care of you Ahab wanted the benefits of being the king but didn't want the cost that came with it he wore his robe when he was sitting in the palace in front of the prophets but when it was time to go to battle he took it off how many of us wear our robes in the church, but not at home? How many of us wear our robes on Sunday morning, but not Monday through Saturday? How many of us put on a royal attitude in front of the right people? And we put on that crown and we put on our, our best face and our best look and our best attitude when we're around the right individuals. Look at my robes. Look how holy I am. Look how spiritual I am. But then in the private life, we don't have the king's robes. Jehoshaphat said, I want you to know who I am in the battle. I want you to know who I am when temptation comes. I want you to know who I am in the storm. I'm a child of the king. I am royalty. And what, and what does the Bible say? The Bible says in 1 Peter 2 and 9, but ye are a chosen generation a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into marvelous light. I want to stand out on the battlefield. I want to stand out in this world. I don't want to be Ahab and trying to fit in. I don't want to be at my job trying to fit in. I don't want to be around my worldly friends trying to fit in. I'm going to wear my royal robes. I'm not going to apologize. I want you to know devil in the middle of the storm I am a child of the king of kings I want you to know Goliath when I come forth I'm not coming in my own strength I'm coming in the authority of the fact that I'm a child of the king I want my friends I want my family I want my boss to know so I'm going to wear my royal robes everywhere that I go and I'm not going to be ashamed now watch this this is who I am this is the God that I serve, and I will not strip down, Morgan. I will not do it. For it came to pass that when the captains of the chariots perceived that it was not the king of Israel, they turned back again from pursuing him. And a certain man drew a bow, a venture, and smote the king of Israel. This is Ahab, between the joints of the harness. Therefore he said to his chariot man, Turn thy hand, that thou mayst carry me out the host, for I am wounded. And the battle increased that day. How be it, the king of Israel stayed himself upon his chariot against the Syrians until the evening, and about that time, the sun going down, he died. So, the one, mom, who took off his clothes, the one who was walking in his own understanding, the one who was walking in his feelings and his emotions, Jose, and what he had in mind, he ended up getting killed. But the one who said, I'm going to be true to who I am, just like Micah, Micah said, I don't care what these prophets are saying. I'm going to say what thus saith the Lord. Ahab, 
You can strip down if you want to, but I'm not going to strip down. I'm going to walk in everything that God told me. I'm going to walk in everything that God gave me. I'm going to be everything that God called me to be, and I'm not stripping down for nobody. I don't care how big the army is. I don't care how loud the prophets are. I'm not stripping down what God promised me. I'm not stripping down what God told me. I'm not stripping down my authority. I'm I'm walking boldly in the king's robes in Jesus' name. Because taking off my royal garments will get me killed. Refusing to stand out will get me taken out. Stripping down who I am will get me hurt. Watch. I stripped down who I was to date someone who wasn't good for me. I stripped down who I was and settled for something less than what God had for me. I stripped down who I was and talked myself out of certain opportunities because when I looked in the mirror, I didn't see myself the way that God saw me. When God sees me, he saw me like King Jehoshaphat and I've got royal robes, but I look in the mirror and I begin to talk against myself and speak against myself and I begin to imagine wicked imaginations that exalt themselves against what God is saying about me. So instead of seeing myself in my royal robes, and just like the prophet Elijah, he said, open his eyes, Jose, so that he could see. And he op God opened his eyes and there was angels all around. Maybe sometimes we have to pray, Lord, open my eyes because when I look in the mirror, I see myself as an Ahab. But you created me to be a king Jehoshaphat. When, when I look in the mirror, I just see rags and I, I see common clothes and I don't see nothing special about me. So if that's my perspective, then I settle for less than what God has for me. I, I'll just go ahead and take this job because in my mind, that's that's the best that I'm going to do. I'll just go ahead and date this person because in my mind, that's just what I'm going to do. So we go through life stripped down of everything that God has called us to be and told us that we can be and we settle. Instead of moving in the authority and the power that we have with the king's robes. You know, in the military, uh, I can use this example. When I first came in, um, if a person walked in with a certain rank, everybody reacted. Aleez! Everybody jumps up. Everybody's going to parade rest. If it's an officer, attention. Everybody snaps the attention. But if somebody of my rank walked in, they look and they say, oh, that's just a private that's just the PFC. Okay, nobody responds, nobody moves. Mm -hmm. But that sergeant, that E5, that E6, that E7, that master sergeant, that first sergeant, that captain, that commander, when they walk in the room, everybody responds to what they see them wearing. And it's the same thing. From the very beginning, God clothed Adam and Eve when they made a mistake. And then later on, we see that he was putting his spirit on Samson. And the Spirit of God was with Elijah, and the Spirit of God was with Elisha. And then in the New Testament, because of what Jesus did on the cross, he filled us with his Spirit. So God has been clothing us, and he's been filling us. And then he said to Peter, you are a chosen generation. I chose you. I picked you. Just off the fact that I chose you, you're special. Just off the fact that I chose you, I called you out of darkness into my marvelous light. If I put you in my marvelous light, how can you look like darkness? I pulled you out of darkness and I'll put you in the marvelous light but we've got people Romy that are trying to turn down the marvelous light they're ashamed of the marvelous light they're ashamed of their testimony and God is saying stand bold in my marvelous light no matter what people say stand bold in my marvelous light even if all these false prophets are speaking everything else don't commit to the darkness don't bow down to the darkness don't surrender to the darkness but stand bold because you are a royal priesthood you are a holy nation you are a peculiar people that ye should show forth the praises of him John who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light now watch this we're almost done you can't strip me or intimidate me into taking off what God has put on me religious folks will try to kill what God has called you to be God has put something on every single one of you in this room 
since the day that you were born. He said, I know the plans and thoughts that I have for you, Jose. I know why I made you the way that I made you, John. I know why I made you the way that I made you. I know every detail of your life, every step. I was with you, even if you didn't realize it. He says, I know you, Jasmine. I know you, Romy. I know you, Mom. I know you, Morgan. He says, I've put something on you. I've spoke something into your destiny. I've spoke something into your future. Whose report will you believe? If I told you something, Morgan, if I spoke something to you, Jose, are you going to believe what I say? Are you going to believe what the people say? Are you going to believe what I say? Are you going to believe what your family says? Are you going to believe what I say? Are you going to believe what your past says? Are you going to believe what I say? Are you going to believe what the media says? And face Facebook and Instagram and social media, whose report will you believe? Micah said, I'm going to stand on the report of the Lord. I don't care what the rest of you guys are saying, and I don't care if it's not popular. And nobody's going to strip me down, and nobody's going to make me bow down. So watch this. Genesis 37. And they said, verse 19, and they said one to another, behold, the dreamer cometh. Look at this guy. He's the dreamer. He's the big shot, Morgan. Come now, therefore, and let us slay him and cast him into some pit. And we will say some evil beast has devoured him and we shall see what will become of his dreams. Oh, God gave you a dream. <laughs> God gave you a word. God told you you were better than us. Well, let's see what we can do about that. And Reuben heard it and he delivered him out of the hands and said, let us not kill him. And Reuben said unto him, Shed no blood, but cast him into the pit that is the wilderness, and lay no hand upon him, that he might rid him out of their hands to deliver him to his father again. And it came to pass, when Joseph was come unto his brethren, that they stripped Joseph out of his coat, his coat of many colors that was on him, and they took him and cast him into a pit, and the pit was empty. There was no water in it. Joseph had this special coat that his father made for him. The father put the coat on Joseph and it made people mad and it made people envious, John. But the father put the coat on Joseph because why? Joseph had the father's favor. And even Romy, when the brothers came and they tried to strip the coat off and even though they thought it wasn't fair and they said, why does, why does Joseph get the coat? Even though they took the coat off of Joseph, John, even though they stripped the coat, they couldn't strip the favor. The enemy can try to strip your joy. He can try to strip your peace. But one thing he cannot strip is what God has said over your life. And that's the trick of the enemy. I can't strip what God has said about you, but I can get you to think about it different. I can get you to look at it different. I can get you to doubt it. I can get you to not walk in it. I can get you to do like the prodigal son and walk away from it. I can't strip the father's love. I can't strip what God has spoken over you, but I can get you to feel unworthy of it. I can send the enemy to just strip your motivation so you don't walk in what God has called you to walk in. For some of us today, maybe the enemy has tried to strip you of your joy, your hope, your motivation, maybe even your future. But he cannot strip the word of God that is over your life. Even with Job, the enemy was allowed to touch everything around Job, but he could only do so much and according to the word of God. Even if you find yourself rejected, betrayed in the pit, in the prison, nobody can strip you of the word that God spoke over your life. Wear your royal robes. Don't strip down like Ahab. Wear them proudly and don't apologize. Even when it looks like I've been stripped, I still got it. See, see, understand what I'm saying as I get ready to close this message. Even when it looks like the promises of God are not coming to pass, I'm going to walk like I still got it. Man, where's, where's, it's kind of hot. Do I, got my, my, do I got my jacket over here somewhere? Man, you, you got to put that thing on. There it is. Come on, let me show you. I'm going to show you guys this, and I'm going I'm to close this thing up. This is like the word of God, right? And he spoke it over you, and you felt that thing. Now, whew. as soon as I put this thing on, I'm getting really hot really fast, <laughs> all right, because I feel the effects of it. 
God put something on you. He spoke something on you. And I feel the effects of it. And now I start sweating because I feel the effects of what I just put on. See, when you put on, when you get in the presence of God, you're going to feel the effects of it. When I begin to pray, I'm going to feel the effects of it. When I begin to fast, I'm going to feel the effects of it. Just having this on, there's going to be a cause and effect. Because if I put on the king's robe, if I got on the coat like Joseph, the coat of favor, right? People are going to see it and they're going to want to strip it and they're going to want to take it off. And even the enemy. And so what the enemy does is he says, you know what, John? I see you over there. You think that you're a big shot in the kingdom. So this is what I'm going to do, right? And he tries, to, he tries to strip your joy and he tries to strip your peace or, or maybe we mess up or we fall short. And then you take that thing off. It's just like the prodigal son. And you're looking back and you're saying, man, I remember the good days. I don't got that feeling anymore. I don't feel like God is with me. Because look, it feels like it's off. So I was sweating, I was hot, but I don't feel hot. God, are you still there? Now I'm in, now I'm in the pit, now I'm in the storm, now we got COVID-19. You gave me this promise, you gave me this word, and things are not going, I'm just not feeling it anymore. And so the enemy will get you in your feelings and say, man, I remember how things used to be. And God is saying, look, all I need you to do is just come back in my presence and put on that king's robe. Go into battle. Don't, don't leave this thing behind. Don't leave the prayer. Don't leave the favor. Don't leave the word that God spoke over your life when you go into the battle. Don't go into the battles in your own understanding. We've got, we've got strife. We've got division. We've got all kinds of things attacking our mind. We've got all kinds of stuff going on in the world. The Lord is saying, don't leave this behind. And even if it feels wrong, me like the enemy has stripped you of everything, he cannot strip what I said over you. And my word will never return unto me void. That that's what the word of God says. If I said it, you can stand on it. If I said it, you can walk in it. If I said it, you can believe it. If I said it, you can go to war on it. If I said it, you can write a check and you can cash that thing and it's not going to bounce because God is not a man that he should lie. Everything that he says is true. The promises of God are yes and amen. So I will wear my royal robes in the battle. I will wear my royal robes in my home. I will wear my royal robes at my job. I will walk around like a son and a daughter of the king of kings. And devil, you can't have my robe. You can't have my peace. You can't have my joy. You can't have my mind. The enemy's just looking for a little bit of territory to make you doubt everything that God said. But as we see with Ahab, when he took off the royal robes, when he took off his God-given position, that's when he got killed. No matter what the battle looks like, no matter what any of us are facing today, we all need to leave this place knowing, you know what? I serve the king of kings. He rules over everything. He's the king of kings. It doesn't matter who the president is. It doesn't matter who the most powerful people are in America. We are part of that kingdom. We are citizens and the king of kings is the one that we follow. The king of kings is the one that we serve. And so the Lord is looking for somebody today who says, I'm going to be like Micah. And no matter what everybody else is doing, I'm going to flow in the word of God. I'm going to be like King Jehoshaphat. And even if the battle looks crazy and we look outnumbered, I'm going to be true to who I am. I'm not going to surrender. I'm not going to bow down. And I'm going to stand on the word of God. Let's stand up and let's pray, guys.